On the day of recording, it is the day after Doctor Who Day 2022, Connor. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 What theme is this? Oh, happy birthday. I thought you were doing like Imperial March for a second. I don't know. very thing. Yeah, sure. Happy birthday. It's a remix of Imperial March. Murray Gold's reprise of happy birthday. How did you spend your Doctor Who Day, Connor? Well, man, I feel like I did Doctor Who Day the wrong way around. I hit me. Watched all six episodes of The Green Death, which is what we're reviewing today nice. on the twenty second, mm-hmm. and then twenty third. Just, um, just enjoyed the goodies that were coming for for us from BBC. It was a know. day filled with like lots of little little nice bits. things. Nothing like nothing that'll knock your socks off. Yeah, but, I thought know. we were gonna get something a bit bigger, I and mean, we maybe yeah, we'll get into that. I thought maybe we were getting something bigger as well, but you know, yeah, I did it. I feel like I did it the wrong way around, so mm. I did it the day before. What about you? How did you spend Doctor Who Day? My Doctor Who Day. Well, I didn't actually like realize until midday that it was Doctor Who Day. Right. And um, but I did get up in the morning before work and I watched an episode of Doctor Who, uh, which is fitting because it is one of the best episodes of Doctor Who of all watch? time. It's uh, it's like got the best supporting cast. Like I hope they come back in R two D two. Okay. It has. It's got like one of the best stories. Um, really well written. Love and Monsters. Um, it's, it's just one of my favourite episodes of all time. Love the Monsters. Legend of the Sea Devils. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so I actually got the... Um, the Steelbook. The Steelbook. So I've okay. been chipping away through that and uh, just power the Doctor to go, God, that episode what? is so bad. What an episode I watched on Doctor Who Day. I know, I literally... <laughs> yeah, that episode sucks. It's like, it just sucks because of like the COVID shit. Like you could really tell that that mm. got fucked over the it. But, but man, it's just it sucks. not good in any way, shape or form. It like... Uh, the the shots that aren't ruined by shit green screens and, and VFX kind of look nice. Like it's, it's quite pretty in a lot of places. Yeah, it can be pretty in some places with the but green screen stuff. Like like there's yeah, literally it's, like, it's just terribly written. Like the, it's yeah. just undeniable. Like there's a scene uh, where the Doctor is like, "You can't kill that sea devil." Within three minutes or so, there's a scene where Dan kills yeah, four like sea devils. Old... It's Ew! just terribly written. Like yeah. there's the. I mean, you can argue against it. You're entitled to it, but like I just. Yeah, for well, me, it's you're undeniable. More, you're yeah. more positive on that that dark day in April when we reviewed it. I like to try and be positive. No, but... me too. And I'm I'm worried about when we get to the Jody era. I don't want to be negative, but you know, obviously, yeah. we got some stuff to say about that. But yeah, no, it's it's fun. Yeah. What's to come on today's show, Connor? What is to come, Aiden? We're going to be breaking down Doctor Who Day 2002. 2002. Yeah. Well, should we should we look back at 2002 and see what happened on? Nothing. On that date? Nothing. Yeah. You come back to 2005. Yeah, that was nothing. Yeah. Okay. I was, I made this post on Instagram yesterday just saying like, happy birthday Doctor Who. And I was like, I put, I mentioned the revival and I was like, is my knowledge good? Is it 2005? I know if I put it out, I know if I put it out there and it's wrong, someone's going to DM me. Someone's going to DM me and go, hey. Should you really be running that podcast, man? Yeah, no, probably not. Probably no. not. But yeah, we'll be breaking down Doctor Who Day 2022. Uh, we're going to be talking about a new companion because holy shit, we've got a new companion since we last recorded. Millie Gibson, baby. We want to get into that later in the Damn show. Right, we did. We've got a new segment. What we watched this week, which was the working title. Yes. I literally just messaged Aid today work. and said, look, I know we want to kind of like dive a little bit into the whole 50% thing whilst keeping it a Doctor Who podcast. And I feel like... We watched so much stuff from the week, mm-hmm. and I thought it'd be a good place to um, go and just mention what we've watched. Yeah, because so, I've watched a couple of things. I know you have, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll be we'll be doing that as well later on in the show. And then, of course, we will round out the show with our lovely review of, of the, the Green, Green Death, Death, a six-part John Pertwee serial. Wow, it's insane. Doesn't it look weird to be recording and it's still kind of sunlight? I feel like this is the um, lighting we had for the Christmas episode we did. Yeah, it's probably because my white balance isn't set right, but that's fine. But it looks really nice, though. It's warm. It's sunset vibes. Yeah, it's it, a bit warm today, isn't it? Yeah, like, well, I, I was talking about the colours, but but oh, yes, temperature I'm wise. definitely feeling it today. This, this, this weather in Perth at the moment has been so weird. It was like raining last week, mm-hmm. f- fucking flash floods, and now it's a bit... Bit, bit sticky. It's a bit sticky. It's I bit think my, sticky. I think because it's changed that drastically, my body is like struggling to cope. Like, yeah. I was literally like sat in a room the other day at work and I was just like sweating like uncontrollably. And I was like, I can't. I was like, are you guys hot? Uh, like- yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, I've been in a roof and luckily now it's got aircon in there. But when we were doing the whole roof extension, like for the solid like year, there was no. Nothing. There was nothing. And it was just like. I've never sweared so much in my life, man. Like, it was like, it was just 
Hugh. Just just a sweaty boy. Hugh. Sweaty boy, Connor. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. It's just that Perth weather, you know. Yes. Uh, you can follow us on the socials, at 50 Doctor on Twitter and Instagram. And on YouTube, you can see our lovely, pretty little faces uh, at the 50% Doctor Who podcast YouTube channel, where there's bonus videos and little clips and cut downs mm-hmm. of the show. Let's get us to 500 by January 1st. Can it happen, Aiden? We're, we're, we're on our time. It's a question mark. Hashtag get 50% to 50, 500. Hashtag 500% podcast. Hashtag 500%. We're going to have to start that because, um, yeah, we're running out of time a little bit. We are. We need to... My time... Sorry. I just... My time I was, is <laughs> running out. I'm surprised. I was like, how about I do a sentence and then cut it off with a quote that I only did two words of and you managed <laughs> I, to get the quote from that? I uh, Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's because I'm a, a Doctor Who fan. That's the life. Like, you know not great in it, some, some ways. It's the lovely life that we lead. 50% baby. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50% pop, 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 ca, ca, ca. Uh, okay, Connor, so Doctor Who Day 2022, my friend. What's yeah. the first thing we got? The 60th logo. So wow. it's basically the logo, the Paw Patrol. The Paw Patrol the logo. The Paw Patrol Tom Baker logo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that Paw Patrol It's good um, <laughs> with, a, with a lovely little 60th anniversary mm-hmm. There's someone at BBC goes 60th anniversary <laughs> Well it's a diamond as well though It is a diamond It's an, like it's, They've changed the design Man, I, I love symbolism To a so diamond <laughs> God bless it's it It's symbolic Now nah, it looks I think it looks lovely I think it does yeah and, and it does answer the question as well though We were all like Is this logo gonna be the future Doctor Who logo, or is it going to just be for the 60th yeah, logo? I don't know. And well, no. Now, now I think it kind of tells us that the the logo that we saw a month ago is going to be the main logo going forward for RTD two. Right. And then this diamond one is the one that's specifically the, the for the 60th, year. The 60th logo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, nah, I think it looks lovely. Um, yeah. I think it looks really fitting. I know you were saying about how you missed the um the Jody. Yeah. The Jody Doctor Who. The big sad. Um. Font. But you know, I, I actually genuinely do think it's actually really nice. Like, I'm really, I'm happy I'm, with it. Uh, it had to change at some point. It just starts yeah. like it's even on. It's even plastered on like this Blu-ray set. Like, yeah, it's like it's on our podcast banner. Like, it's kind of everywhere still. And yeah, it will take some adjusting, I guess. But yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's the same as the one we saw a month ago, pretty much. With a little but bit of a... A little tweak. A little, little tweak. A bit of text, a bit of diamond. Yeah, because diamonds mean 60th anniversary. Correct. That's why we all thought Edgar Wright was going to be yeah. directing because he put hey, up a photo of it diamonds. It can still happen. It can still happen. Fourth special. Fourth special? Uh, the secret special, is that the what you're saying? The secret special. No, Edgar Wright's directing the fourth special. You can dream, can't you? You can, you can dream. I can dream. I do dream. Yeah, me too. Some people don't Some, dream. Sometimes Clara asks me if I dream. <laughs> <laughs> The more I look back on that, the more I hate it. Oh, I love that ending. <laughs> it's it's fine. Great. Do I want to see Clay, uh, Christopher Eccleston? Not really. That that Clay <laughs> is it. Clay or is it like another actor? It's another actor, and then they CGI the faces yeah, on. That, We're that, talking about the ending of the fiftieth, by the way. That if anyone haunts doesn't me. Know. That 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 CGI haunting. <laughs> <laughs> that CGI Chris Ferguson haunts me in my dreams. Proper haunting. What else we got from, from Doctor Who Day 2022? You were supposed to read this one. It says new companion, Millie really Gibson. No, you're, you're reading the wrong part of the run sheet, mate. This is this is the tradition. New segment. What no, we... no, no. That... Down there. Oh, shit. New artwork. We're good. We're good. We got this. Sorry, I'm still learning the, uh, the, the run sheet. I was reading the wrong, wrong thing. We're going so well until that point. Sorry. But that's cool. So this new artwork, Connor. Mm-hmm. So we've got new artwork. This was the one with all the new doctors on it. Mm-hmm. With the doctors on it. Yeah. It's nice because it's like we only get these like every 10 years where they put them all on one. No, I think it's good because also you, you always get like the fan edit ones. Which looks shit. And they always look a bit pants. Yeah. But um, yeah, we got one and it had the future doctor in it. It did. And it had um, the war doctor was in it. Mm-hmm. And we get, it's kind of weird to see Jodie now in not, it. Not the center. Yeah. Mm. That's kind of, that's kind of weird. And then we got... <laughs> Just David twice. I know. It's like two Davids, like one's 10 and one's 14. So mm. It's good. That artwork was by Lee Binding, who if you don't follow on Instagram, you really should because he makes all the covers for the, the Blu-ray sets. Oh, and, I didn't um, know that. He, and he just does like fan edits for fun as well. Like He's just a really talented um, like computer artist person. Okay. Um, really cool stuff. And uh, he also did a few other picks that we saw, saw throughout the day, such as the David Tennant one on yeah, like, that the that sunset. Great. Yeah. yeah, really talented guy. Yeah, it actually looked really nice. And... Um, it's enough to get you excited. I guess as well, like, we'll be... I guess also people are thinking, like, it's only a year now until we get the special. Mm-hmm. I assume we might be getting the 
if this was going to be the third and final special, maybe Aaron on that day or maybe near the... Yeah, around it. Around yeah. that day. But yeah, that is like basically like just a year now. This so time next year, we year. probably would have seen these three David Tennant episodes, yeah, which is crazy. That's a long time though. But it will go so quickly. So. It will go very, very quickly indeed. But we've got the new 14th Doctor description, which I've got on my phone. Yes, get you, it up. Do you want me to read this to you, Aiden? And- yeah, read out this 14th Doctor description because it, it's everyone's saying like... Is he going to be like the 10th Doctor again? Is he going to be a different Doctor? We kind of have an answer. You're about to find out. What, what's this from? This is from... I don't know, actually. <laughs> Do you know what it's from? I think it's just... I think the BBC put it out. Yeah, I don't know what it is from. I saw it on Twitter and I just screenshotted it. Twitter, we believe everything. Yeah, I bet. this, this is real. This is literally real. Confirmed. All right, the 14th Doctor. The 14th Doctor, just like the 10th Doctor, is a uh, intriguing mixture of apparent opposites, an extraordinary mix of kindness and sensitivity, but also someone who gives no second chances. Do you like that? He's that sort yeah, of like, a man. He's that kind of man. <laughs> and who can be alien, detached, and even vengeful, but never cruel. And you get it as well. And never cowardly. Yep. Time will tell how this doctor will respond to the universe around him. It always does. So that last little bit there, I guess, is a little bit intriguing. That time will tell how this doctor will respond to the universe around him. Because I guess times have changed, and if he is, like the description kind of said, he is the he is the tenth Doctor. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a bit of a fucking word mumble way of telling you he's the he's same back. guy. He's the same guy, but yeah. I guess it's like how will this character now deal with um, current world events? I guess I, I think it's also like he's the same Doctor, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Mm. You know, he's had the timeless child. All that stuff. You know, he's been through a lot, losing many friends along the way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, and so I guess like hopefully for me, I want to see a 10th Doctor that's grown a little bit. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're, um, what we're going for. I wonder, you know, I was thinking the other day, I was wondering if like, um, could you imagine if this ever happened with like Matt Smith or something? If Matt Smith came back and did like a free special thing. And, I don't like, think that would happen at this it's point. It's kind of like, but... I know, but like, <sighs> but we got this far. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, I, like we got this far. This time last year, I would have said I don't think David Tennant will come back for three specials, like as the Doctor, as the fourteenth Doctor. But like of they, all things. look, they didn't have to do it the way they did it with him being the fourteenth. Like he could just be like the Fugitive of War, but they have gone and named him fourteenth, mm. like, and they have chucked him like twice in that that picture of all the Doctors, like ten yeah. and fourteen. So he really is the fourteenth. There, there could point. be a way of doing it, but I don't know. Maybe not, but yeah, I guess like the future is like very uncertain what they're going to do. I feel like we're going to see things that we would never expect, but you know. I was like, a lot of people were there like, oh, he's, he's probably going to be like playing it different. Like he might have a different accent or something. Yeah, but I was maybe always Scottish, like, maybe, I was like, you not. bring David Tennant back. You don't just bring him back for the look. You bring him back for the 10th Doctor. Like, mm-hmm. I think it would be stupid to, to not make him the 10th Doctor. Like I want a 10th Doctor that's grown and evolved, but if he wasn't, you know, running around saying Alan Z and like yeah. the, every every traditional 10th Doctor thing that I wouldn't be. Well, I read the comic keen. strip, the first part. Oh, you did, didn't you? And I think that the way, the way he's written is very 10-esque. Cool. Did he say Alan Z in the comic? He didn't. Ooh. Not in part one, at least. Mm. Saving but it for the show. I won't say this, but when, when it ends, it's like, the way it ends, like the first part, it's like, of course... Right. And okay. when you see it, you'll be like, of course. Like they couldn't they couldn't just wait. That's all I'll say. They, they couldn't, couldn't wait. They couldn't just wait. They couldn't it had to be I got I wanna say, but I know you want to read it, so yeah, read I'll, yourself. I'll but, read it. I bet I bet his but, first words are Rose. Oh, wow. No, no, but trust me, when you read it and you see like how it ends. By the way, I thought it was really good. Um for someone who doesn't really like reading comics. Uh but when it ends you're like could you not have waited just a little while to do this? You'll see. You'll see. And then, All right. And then get back to me and let me know I'm what excited. you did. But no, it actually was really good. I, I liked it a lot. We also got a, a trailer, a little trailer that was, I think it was called like the friendship trailer or something, which was mm-hmm. David and, and it was just like a tribute to series four, basically on the specials. And, and they're coming back, baby. And they're coming back. So David and Catherine um, and, and Bernard Cribbins there. Uh, and they had a few shots of them behind the scenes going ha- uh, happy Doctor Who day, yeah. which was great to see like a nice like behind the scenes footage. It's weird, man. I'm it's sure we're nice. going to get lots of that. I'm, I'm yeah, keen definitely. for it. Nah, he's in his vest. He wasn't wearing the jacket. He was just in the vest. I know. It's like, yeah, it's looking very, very... He's so handsome, very that man. Oh, he's, he's, 
Yeah, I can see why Vinny really loves him. That's what I'll say. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Uh, also, just rattling off a few more things that we got throughout the day is new B&M sets, which I think one of the figures looks great and the other one has a <laughs> massive forehead. I see everyone loving the Jody one and everyone's like with the David one being like, okay. It's so like, because the actual like body and stuff looks great, mm. but it's just like the head, like what was wrong with the mold they used in like... Yeah. Like five, ten years ago, whenever they last did a David figure, well, they yeah. did a David figure like six months ago, didn't they? Uh, they did three David tenants in a yeah, box. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, Let's I, take that head. I, but I, I hear that. I know that uh, B and M fans and like I, I know one of the big um, things for and this doesn't imply to me because I'm sure you because I don't I don't collect the figures, mm. but I know that people love doing that, and I know a big complaint during maybe like the. Chibnall era was that like it wasn't really getting enough attention they yeah. weren't getting enough sets and I I, I I have a feeling now that Russell's back that he is like not only just taking over the show but like you know we've spoken about him in the magazine and like being more into that and like the way that he said that the, the box sets will have the same yeah. um, covers like the, the Doctor Who title wasn't it that was the thing they yeah they're, they're going to keep the same logo for, yeah. for the uh, collection sets he's aware of that and I, I know that the figures was one another thing that he wanted to like make sure was gonna keep coming and, and being you know getting released like enough to please fans one thing that kind of ties into that is I was I, I was a bit I had like a freak out moment where I was like what if Doctor Who flops on Disney Plus like what if it just doesn't work mm-hmm. and I, I was like D- does that mean we're gonna get like one or two seasons there and then it's just this thing where Disney's kind of in, a, in on it but they don't want it anymore yeah and it's like what the fuck happens then does Doctor Who just kind of die a quiet death and then I was like, all right, I'm just going to go on the Disney Plus Twitter account. I'm going to see like what, so, like see if lots of people are liking the post and stuff like that and, and compare it to other shows. So like the tweets about like Star Wars and stuff were getting like 200, 300 likes a post and yeah. the Doctor Who ones were getting like 4,000 likes a post. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I think they're onto something here. I think, I think it's going to be fine. Um, I know you can't really judge how a show's going to perform off of interaction online, but... Um, Excuse me. But it's a good like indicator of that, I guess. Yeah, I know we're talking about Millie Gibson a bit later, but I think that like her pairing with Shooty Gatwa is like it Doctor Who's mm. hip, it's now, it's 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 yeah. current. It's, it's a very modern. attractive TARDIS team between it, the two of them. It really right? is. Like uh, I I heard um a friend of mine who doesn't like Doctor Who was like, Oh, I, I even think that's a good team. Yeah, like, a they good just, pair up. It they just kinda right. works. It's just I know it's I know you can't really say they're a good team next you haven't seen it, but there's something about it I just feel like really works. And I think um, that's very attractive for Disney Plus. You know, they're going to want to have that. I think, but I think the, um, I think the golden goose was definitely shooty with his effect yeah. that he's had on Netflix and with uh, sex ed. Mm-hmm. I know that Disney's always trying to be that like competitor to Netflix. And I feel like with the second that shooty was hired, it was like, that's, that's what we need for the, I said in my videos, like, these these two people are going to be the face of Disney+. Plus. Like, they will. And it's a really important cast and choice. And I think, so far, very impressed. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there yeah. in a mo. Um, just quickly, Big Finish uh, have announced what their special is going to be for the 60th, because they always do a special for this every This sounds really good. I might jump on it, Aiden. You say that literally every time there's a Big Finish <laughs> announcement. Christopher Eccleston, I'll jump on it. Like, literally all of them you think hey, you have would. a little faith in your co-hosts, please. Ah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, but there is, yeah, a big finish set that is, it's going to be, I think it's eight parts spanning once a month from, like, January an episode comes out. And it, I think I read the plot is, like, kind of what we all thought the 60th was going to be, where the Doctor is going to be, like, jumping between phases, like, different past faces and stuff like that. Might still happen. And, and the faces that we're going to see are from Tom Baker all the way through... To bloody David Tennant, yeah. Chris Eccleston's in there. Yeah. Sylvester McCoy, Paul McGann, Colin Baker, Peter Davison. They're all there. Like yeah. we've never had four to ten together. It sounds great. That's I insane. Know. That's what um that's what Chris Eccleston was talking about at that con a couple of months ago, and he's like, yeah. I filmed something for the 60th, and it's really good. Uh, yeah, you know what, I and I might hop on it. You might because I, uh, I got a show to run here. I've got to, you know, do my uh, my research. I got to bring in a review. Mm. Yeah, I think I think it'll be good. It'll be nice. Um, so do you yeah. buy the box set and then like every month it'll just? I think so. Episode. It's got a bit of a hefty price tag to it, I think. But look, the, oh, I bet if it's like eight it's new a episodes, huge cast, eight episodes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'll probably end up being worth it. Um, I just hope the story is good. No, nah, um, me too. That that sounds um that sounds great. Now I'll definitely try and mm-hmm. yeah, 
you want to get hype in the 60th year if there's going to be a little break between episodes That's you true. might as well try and see what big finish let's see what let's throw Nick Briggs a bone all yeah right? we'll give him a bone is he involved in it uh, he, I'm sure he wrote yeah, and uh, no, he probably I don't know who wrote it. Bit. He probably wrote like an episode or two. I don't yeah, know. He probably does. Yeah. I don't know if that All information right. has been released yet. And the very last thing, which felt like the ultimate climax of our our celebrations, oh, was of course that we finally got David Tennant saying, "Don't forget to subscribe to the Doctor Who podcast, to the official Doctor Who podcast YouTube channel." This was at the end of a live stream of all the Doctors meeting each other. They did like every time in Doctor Who that that a Doctor has met another incarnation of the Doctor. They cut it all together, put it out of a live stream so everyone could all watch them together. Are they teasing so for the 60th or something? Well, they then on? sort of teased. They were like, okay, this is going to be our last clip, but stick around, guys, because there'll be a surprise. And I saw that, and I was like, oh, fuck, are we going to get, like, a shooter reveal soon, like, or, or something? And, and I sort of, like, sat around, and I wasn't watching the stream, but, like, every hour I just sort of checked YouTube, and I was like, still nothing. And then it just hit me. I was like, could the special surprise be at the end of the video? And then I was like scrolling through and I could see it was all just the same clip at the end. And then there was like 25 seconds left. And I was like, I know what this is. And I played it. And they it was know. David Tennant they telling know. me to click subscribe. It's, it's classic. They know though. Like they really yeah. know. Because it's the same quote every time. It started with, um, I think Pete made it a meme. Because Pete yeah. was like, don't forget to click below to subscribe God. to the official Doctor Who mm-hmm. YouTube channel. And that's what I'm saying to you guys. Please. Mm. Do not forget to click below to subscribe to the official 50%, 50% Doctor Who podcast YouTube channel. We are trying to get to 500 subscribers by Jan 1st. And if we get there, we're going to do a shot on air. I can't say the <laughs> name for it, but well, it's where but you do we'll the do... lemon, the salt, mm-hmm. and the and the tequila. That's right. We're going to do it. We're going to do if a shot. Five, if you don't, nothing. You don't get anything. And look, the more, the more we reach milestones, the more we'll do more fun episodes. We're talking about maybe doing a live episode at some point next oh, year. Can I just say there is so much fun stuff happening behind the scenes. There are so oh, many yeah. amazing plans. It's going to be, um, it's going to be great. Like seriously, there's so many great fun things we're going to be doing. And so stick around subscribe. to the end of the show. Cause uh, we'll, we'll tell you what's coming up next week, which is going to be a, a really fun, fun episode. Announcement. Fun episode with a fun guest. Wee-oo. Yeah. Which we're allowed to say it's coming on now. I said it last week and it got cut out. <laughs> um, I didn't okay. know we weren't allowed to say it. So, all right. So, um, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about Millie Gibson, yeah. the new Doctor Who companion. Connor, yeah, walk us through it in a sentence or two. What happened? I'm sure everyone knows by now, so we'll do it briefly. So I was driving home from work on Friday. Got a little uh, little ping Bing. on Twitter, Doctor Who Twitter. Got it on notifications saying nice. that we are going to find out who the new companion is mm. in the Children in Need 2022 special. Well, 2002, 2022. And that would be special. strange because she be she wasn't born in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah, Millie Gibson, which is um yeah, our new companion who's playing Ruby Sunday, which is a classic R to D name, which I joked about in my little mm-hmm. video breakdown that I did. Um yeah, no, I, I think it's like we said before, I think it's amazing casting. Uh, I'm I, I also said in my video, my, my sister's a, a big uh, Coronation Street fan. Oh, so I yes. messaged her, she's on holiday at the moment, and I was like do you know this person? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, it's a new companion. She's like, I wonder why she just left Coronation Street <laughs> randomly. I wonder why she went up the stairs and never came back. I never came back. Yeah, I'm <laughs> popping out for some milk and never came back. And good on her, you know, what a glob. But yeah, she is She is 18, so she's very... Probably, is this the youngest companion I've ever had? I would be curious to know how young um, bloody Susan, Susan was. Susan Caroline Ford. Yeah, so I was... Yeah, I said it was the youngest companion, just I, hoping that it was. I've heard a lot of people say that, so I don't think you're you're alone. Yeah, she's no. definitely the youngest in you who. Definitely, um, it's yeah. so interesting because like when you first saw those pics, I was like, oh, she doesn't look eighteen. But then when you start seeing like clips yeah. of her like talking, um, you're kind of like, oh, she's yeah, she's quite young. Which is which I think is, it's got to be nice because you can tell that I think Russell, in a good way, is looking at okay. The revival works so well. Like, series one works so well. Let's, like, look at that and, like, obviously modernize it, do different things to it. But let's just look at the formula that works so well there, which is obviously, like, a doctor and then a young companion. Um, You know, Chris and and Billy, once again, quite an attractive-looking, quite a very 2005 attractive-looking couple. Um, And they've they've sort of come on and done it again, I think, here. 
Uh, and yeah, it, it's so, but it's so like, she's like a young blonde, same as Rose. I think I read somewhere that she's going to be working in a shop. I don't know where that source was from, but I'm like, they really are just doing the whole sort of like Rose thing again. I think that's a fair argument. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they are doing that again. I, obviously, like we are just like assuming how it's going to be done, but like mm. I think it'll be interesting to see. I really do think Shudi's uh, doctor's going to have to definitely go with a, a Matt Smith approach of, uh, you know, young doctor, huge past, been alive for fucking 12, 1200 years, yeah. whatever, you know. Uh, you know, I'm interested to see how they handle it, but I think it's really good. I'm actually really happy with it. Um, yeah, look, obviously, like, she is quite young. And I know that it's a very big thing for someone at 18 to be. It's like a huge responsibility. I hope that it it's it's scary the fact like it's gonna be such a huge thing to do. Yeah, massive um, for her. But I I know that Shudi said that the second she left the room that uh, Shudi was present at the casting, which again makes sense. But I know that he said the second that she left the room, he was like, Russell, that's who we, that's who we need to that's have. It. She's the one. And I feel uh, like that kind of, um, if Shudi said it and if Russell agrees and like, I, I have, I have faith in that, but of course it actually got confirmed as well that she would be intro- uh, introducing the, um, the festive special. Correct. 2023. So that we'll would see be her at Christmas. Very shortly after the um, the 60th specials, yeah. so yeah, nah, it'd be it'd be great. It'd be, it'd be interesting because like they're both young, so it's gonna be. I'm so. I think the thing I'm keenest to see is that again how Shooty handles being this Time Lord who is over 2,000 years old. Yeah, I think it's all about balance because yeah. the guy has such charisma. Um, we we all saw on Instagram and Twitter that him and uh, Capaldi were at the, the Scottish Baptists. Where Capaldi... Uh, that gave me a life. Capaldi, thank God, won uh, an amazing award. And, and like, Shooty was there and he was doing his speeches. And the man, if he doesn't laugh like he does in that, in <laughs> Doctor Who, the guy, like, he has the most cheeky, infectious, like, ha, 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 Yeah, that, yeah. Like, I could never do it justice. It is an amazing laugh. And I hope we get that cheek. Like, I hope we get the energy and cheek that he has. Yeah, man, but I think we will. I know you want that sterner Doctor as well. And I, I think it's about... Um, moments you know Definitely, like, yeah. like i think matt is a good a good comparison because matt was silly and wacky i think it will be a very similar matt but then gets stern and dark when he needs to mm. i think instead of silly and wacky maybe it's a bit like cheeky mm. that we get get from shooty um, but yeah still stern when he needs to be yeah i think matt did such a perfect job at it i don't doubt for a single second that you know shooty won't be able to do that um mm. i have i'm so curious to see how they do it and like, I know we spoke about it as well, like, you know, it would have been nice to have a costume reveal, but uh, I guess we could get in that soon because they're going to be shooting. They're going to be shooting very shortly, yeah. which by the way, it's classic. Like, you know, why they announced it is because they're going to be shooting and you would have seen her uh, Ruby on yeah. uh, Millie Gibson I, on set. So they would have been like, I think is, is the new companions, I guess. I think someone asked Shudi at the BAFTAs about his costume. And he think, I think he said it's still a bit like fluid at the moment. So whatever oh, that okay. means, it's still like it's going to be like Pete, where it's a bit of a different costume every week, which I hope. I hope um, but, so. But That'd a similar cool. look. That'd be sick. Um, but it also, I, I think it meant he meant a bit more that it's not finalized yet. Right. So that, that, that makes up and- that makes sense. To <laughs> that makes sense. Why I didn't? They definitely probably wanted to show it with the 60th celebration, like you know, content that they were just releasing out of the day. But like, yeah, you know, it probably just wasn't ready. Yeah. I would much prefer they take their time. I think the costume is such a huge part of the doctor like again when we're talking about green death like i was loving all of uh, john pertwee's costumes hey, he's got episode. amazing costumes amazing it's such an important thing to do um and no disrespect to jody i never really liked her costume i like her costume <sighs> I, I just like don't it. like it all right i just I don't like it. it so like you know i've gone through that for five years and i really want a costume that i'm gonna love i'm sorry i'm not trying to hate i don't like it i ain't trying to hate shaking I just, my head Another wrong of buying uh, getting stuff from thrift stores, but you know. Anyway, I I think that I think that is a really important thing to do and like decide. So yeah, I'm glad they're taking the time of it. I think it's the appropriate thing to do. So yeah, it was great to see like Disney Plus tweeting it all out and stuff. Like, I know I know we were talking about the tweets yeah, and stuff of them already. They, they want to get that um that press going, you know. The hype is well and truly on. Uh, Millie Gibson very quickly got some brownie points for me. One for just she seems like a really cool person from the little interview that we saw between her and Shooty. 
but to I love she, how they're doing that stuff by the way it's great it's really great it really is I'm so glad that they're doing that she she was like the day after she was announced she went on holiday to Lake District specifically Kendall which is the <laughs> town where I was born and raised in the UK for six years before I moved to Australia but I've been back there many times since I was there a few years ago it's an old people's town it's lovely it's uh, it's beautiful it's a, it's a stunning environment um, and she was there in a pub that I've I mean, there's like one or two pubs in Kendall. I'm probably, I've probably been to the pub that she was in. Do you think that she did it for you because she's a fan of the show? <laughs> we'll ask her when we bring her on. Dude, 100%. Like, it's going to happen, man. <laughs> You've got to believe it, you know. You've got to believe it. A, a very last thing on, on Doctor Who Day is, is that I'm, I am kind of glad that it was very David Tennant, Catherine Tate focused mm-hmm. because there's been so much exciting stuff about Shooty's era. And I am literally, like I've said this before, I'm way more excited for Shooty's era than I am for the David Tennant stuff, which surprises me. But I think I'm just so excited about the casting and, and the sort of new direction that I kind of keep forgetting that we have these three specials that are going to be amazing mm. first. And, and I think this this year's anniversary being very focused on David and Catherine kind of reminded me that no this is a, like a little mini era that we're doing first I'm excited for it it's interesting that they they did kind of like uh, not shoot themselves in the foot but I guess they're going to be got, getting an interesting task of trying to marketing wise handle the fact that it's going to be these three episodes but don't worry because shortly afterwards you're getting this whole new era I wonder how they're going to do um, like showing like promo images of shooty and like trying not to confuse like the audience that it's not well, going to be in the i think 60 of specials it's a whole thing afterwards i don't know i think we we know they're shooting in starting shooting in december for series 14 i, I reckon that'll be done like mid-year to like maybe july august kind of time and, and so then that will you know there's obviously gonna be a lot of hype around that time whenever we see them shooting but then there's going to be like two or three months where there's probably not going to be any news about Series 14, mm. and that's when they can focus on hyping up the David Tennant era. Dude, you know, like, you know, we're going to get that fat Season 14 trailer at the end of the Christmas special, right? Oh, oh man. Which I'm... I cannot wait for. I. Oh, surely. That, no, they if... will, because it would have been shot. Yeah, they will. Like, we'll get something. Ah, surely, that's like. That's going to be insane. As a final send off to the 60th at the end of the Christmas special. Surely they just do like all the strange, strange creatures for the coming soon trailer. Oh dun, 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 oh dun, 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 dun. Come on, Ruby. <laughs> Is this the script dun, dun, dun. that you've read? I'm Nick Briggs, a Dalek. Man, it does not get better than that season three score, does it? I tell you what, though, that is going to slap. It's going to slap? It is going to slap. Slap. All right, let's do a little bit of the Green Death review and then we'll get Yee-haw! into what we watch. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls and everything in between, the Green Death is the fifth and final series of the 10th season of the British science fiction television series Doctor Who broadcast from the 19th of May uh, from the 19th of May to the 23rd of June, 1973. <laughs> Excuse me. It was the, I keep bourbon tonight. It was the last regular appearance of Katie Manning as companion, Joe Grant, John Pertwee's the doctor in it. Um, these two lovely companion duo uh, and the organization unit investigate a South Wales mine where waste from an oil plant has killed miners and made maggots grow to a giant size. I said last week that I, I like this story a lot. It's yeah. one that I, I watched when the set came out like two or three years ago, season 10 on Blu-ray. And I instantly was like, I really like that. Like, it's not like a top tier. It's not like my, my favorite classic story, but it's one that I really like. And on the second viewing, yeah, I, I oh, so you did it. watch it again. Yeah. I watched it again. I know, yeah. Of course you did. Yeah. I, I, sorry. I knew that. I don't know why I was. <laughs> yeah. You did, um, yeah. I, I got, I got a, a couple of little flaws that I will, I will discuss, but I, I did, I did really enjoy it. Connor, I'm so excited to know what you thought of it. I can't believe you watched it all in one sitting. Yeah, I shocked the world. Talk to me about it, I Connor. I shocked the world. So, my parents are away at the moment and um, I I had a day off on Tuesday. So, I was like, you know, I, I was watching like H3 podcasts on the TV and then like it just dawned on me. I'm like, it was a Tuesday. We filmed this on Thursdays. I haven't started Green Death yet. <laughs> the six part story. Six parts. And I was like, crumbs. I haven't started it yet. And I was like, oh shit. So I was like, 
you know what? Got the whole house myself. Got the 4K TV. I was like, you know, I got my got my phone out, loaded up BritBox. I'll watch your 720 on not not the remastered Don't version. To this person here. I listen to this <laughs> narc. All right, whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, fine. I watched it on, yeah, on a 4K TV in 720p. It was, it was almost <laughs> like it was taunting me for not buying the Blu-ray. Mm. Sorry, the one. Um, and I, I was like, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll watch, um, I'll watch two parts today, two parts on Wednesday, two parts on Thursday. But that hasn't really worked for me well in the past, but it's like I'm rushing it. And again, I had a little bit of time. So I watched the first two parts. I was like, I've got a bit of time. Watch the third part, like give me mm. uh, a little bit of a break tomorrow. I can only watch one, so I was like, I could just watch one tomorrow. Got to the fourth part, I was like, hmm, <laughs> why did I try and do episode five? And I got like halfway through episode five, and I was like, I might as well finish it. Yeah, and I watched all six parts in a row, which I'm really happy with because um, I feel like I know they're really good. These episodes to the write uh, viewing experience. I know you always have like a nice ritual. I feel like you do it really well. I feel like I do it really badly. <laughs> the classic phone at work. Well, yeah, I would up. never do that. I, I, <laughs> I know you hate that, but I, look. No, I, I get it. I don't really have a good setup at home to watch shit, and like the TV is upstairs, but it's also the family TV. So mm-hmm. I had some time where I have the TV. Parents and sister away. Mm-hmm. Perfect time to do it. Stop tickling my balls, Connor. What did you think of it? Oh, I really liked it. Fuck yes! Yeah, of course I really liked it. I, yes. I, I've i learned that John Pertwee is definitely one of my favourite doctors. Uh-huh. Like, I don't even mean just in the classic era, like, of all time. Like, He's very I really, good. I really love him, and I love Joe Grant as a companion. Um, very good as well. I think I have a very soft spot for this era because this is the era that my dad grew up watching. Mm-hmm. These are the episodes that my dad watched. So I do think I have a little bit of bias between uh, John's era because every time I watch it, I'm like, you know, my dad mentioned the brig the other day and I was like, how the fuck do you know that? Mm. Like, I'm surprised he knew his name, but I'm like, no, it makes sense. Cause like, you know, the brig is such a huge character in, in John's era. Like unit is such a huge part of it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, there's so much love about this. I guess like I always find them a bit too long. I always feel like six parts, like we spoke about um, two Doctors. Yeah, I which, feel like that was way too long. Which easily, like if, if that was in this era, then it would have been a six part story, right? Exactly. It, it was 3.45 yeah. minutes, whereas this is 6.25 minutes. I feel like it could be in like four or five, but yeah. still like, I think that I always recall having this like, um, this like Doctor Who A to Z uh, of aliens and monsters. And mm-hmm. um, I remember... I would like read it in bed as a kid and I would see these maggots and, <laughs> and I would was be them. so scared of them. And I was like, <laughs> what in God's green is? I didn't know what the classic era was. I didn't know any of that shit. But yeah. I was looking at them and I was like, what are these? I had to turn the page. I was like, go away. And I saw them on the TV and I was like, I was like almost doing like a full circle with it being my dad's era, seeing the maggots again. Um, John just being an amazing doctor. Incredible. The brig unit. It, you kind of feel at home and, um, yeah, as much as the story is a bit, it's not all there. And like, there isn't really a big bad unless you count this like big computer. I love the big computer though. It just talks. I think it's, it's, it's so, evil. it's, it's evil. so 70s though, yeah. where it's like the computer has developed an AI. Yeah. Uh, like I, I love, I love that. I, I, I really agree. I, I think. Yeah, five, I know what you think? I, I think the first four parts I fucking love. And if, if the last two parts were as good as one to four, then I think, like this would be a favorite story of mine, but five and six, I think they kind of lose, they don't lose momentum, but I think, I think the plot does fall apart a little bit. Like, yeah, but there's this nice, you, know, you it's funny that you say family because something that I always say, well, no, you said, you said, um, it, it feels like home, right? Mm. Another burp. I'm sorry. Um, a lot's happened to our veins. Uh, he's a bit gassy. I'm a bit gassy today, but yeah. So like, one thing that I love about the Pertwee era is if yeah, it feels like home, it feels like a family because you have not just the Doctor and Companion, but you've got Mike Yates, Sergeant Benton, um, you've got the Brigadier, you know, you've got all these like regular regular characters there, and I think it's uh, uh, it's seeing them again and seeing the familiar sets of the Unit HQ and stuff. I think is always definitely like, from the so from lovely the three Doctors as well. Yeah, so it was it was yeah. I noticed. I remembered it. It's so lovely like to see that kind well, of thing. Yeah. And and yeah, so that stuff is what kind of carries through five and six, I think, where it does mm. fall apart a little bit. But then you also have what is like the core of this, 
like the emotional core of this episode, which is Joe and what is his name? Ba, 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 ba. I was going to ask you this. Ba, 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 ba. That's a huge pot. Uh, it's, is it Joe Jones? Is that his name? Is it Joe Jones? The mad scientist, as they call him he's in not, the papers. He's not a mad... No, oh, in the papers. That's what they call him in the papers. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, why can't I find him on bloody Wikipedia? You'd think he'd be like the top listed... Oh, Clifford Jones. Clifford Jones. Professor Jones. Right. Yeah. He... Um, uh, by the way, I do think the actor uh, passed away this year, I think. Yeah, February 2022. Oh um, which is a shame, but he's a he's a terrific actor, and I think he's a lot of fun in this episode. He's like you know when he proposes to Joe, and yeah. well he doesn't even propose. He's like, oh, and we're getting married, yeah. and she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, we're getting yeah, married. Why not? Um, he's like very forward as as a person, but I think um, I think he's fun, and his camera chemistry with Joe, I think is is fantastic, and and it's this great emotional thing of the story, and maybe we'll save it to the end where we talk about the ending because the ending is, is so nice. Yeah, sure. No, um, I, uh, there's a lot to love, I feel like. And it's like, mm. it kind of is like a... It, you arrive at the first four parts, like, particularly the first three, like, it's very it's very fast. Like, it's it, like they start at unit, and then they get this call about in Wales, and then, like, Joe's like, I'm going, and the Doctor Grace is like, planet by himself oh the first part he's just we running around metabolus board. 3 which is what we hear about all the time yeah I, so i i knew i heard this from before so. yeah i think there was like a crystal in hide from it or something right um, it gets referenced all the time and, and all the way through pertwee's era in particular i think he's talking about going to it was that one of the planets that went missing in solar earth as well i don't think it was it could have been i, okay. I don't know for sure i swear i heard it there maybe okay. it was yeah oh, no like, that yeah i thought that was fantastic and you gotta love it for what it is. I say this about Classic Who all the time. By the way, I was a Classic Who like fat virgin beginning <laughs> this year. And I've watched so much this year. Well, so much. I've watched like nearly ten, about eight, seven stories. Yeah, you, you, um, you've you've smashed it, man. Quite yeah. a lot, yeah. And I've really come to love it. But this is what I'll say about it. I think you've definitely just gotta love the show for what it is. It's definitely an acquired taste. Yeah. And like you just gotta love it for what it is, and you've got to really care about the law. But yeah, no, I thought the first three parts were like really like just fast. I, you know, really good. Yeah, they were, they were pretty tight and that, that's why I just feel like five and six, it, it slows. I was I was quite worried with you watching this because I've, I've noticed that with time, um, the more we've watched Classic Who, I felt like the less you've liked it. And I was like, maybe there was a novelty when we first put it on with like City of Death and Three Doctors that you really liked them. And as we went and did another good one, Earthshock, you were a little bit less sore about it. And then you, then you did like survival, but then like you really didn't like the two doctors and and that was just with two doctors and it was the one we did with Josh. That was attack of the Cybermen. Yeah. Well, I guess because I just don't really. I we've said this. I take this with a grain of salt because obviously I I just I hop into these eras. I know I probably offend some people by just hopping in quickly, mm. saying my piece, and then hopping out without watching it all. But I guess season twenty two, no, got it's it. just not really my thing. Not mine either. No, I. I yeah, I, I think definitely going back to uh, John's era, it was something that I, my favorite story that we've we've reviewed is the Three Doctors. And yeah, cool. That is like a John Pertwee era story. It's probably my favorite classic story. The Three Doctors is. Yeah. I think it's great. Like I loved it, and um, and jumping back into that world and having the brig there and unit and like you know Benson and all that. Like you know, I, I there there is something kind of like. You're right. I, I know I kind of said, like, there is something kind of, like, warm about it. Mm. And it just feels... I was talking about this last night. I was like, there's just something crazy to me about the fact that the TARDIS was just, like, stranded in a unit. And he yeah. was just up there. I'm like, imagine if they did that now. I just... I think it took... It took some balls to do it. And I respect it. And I really like it. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Yeah, no. I, 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 yeah, the Doctor going to some, like, dinosaur planet. Like... It's wild. It, like... It's just fun, man. Like it's just fun. Like what can I say? Like I, 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 I was it best Bessie? Bessie, yeah, who, yeah. Who won? Car. Isn't it who won? Is the number plate? Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Like love this it. is just so fun. I'd love a little Bessie just to roll around my desk. I used just, to have one actually. Oh, thanks. I got one for Christmas like many moons ago, and yeah. when I got it, I was like, "What is this?" And they're like, "It's the Doctor's car." And I was like, "He doesn't have a car." It's so funny. Like I know he doesn't have a car. <laughs> He's got a Tardis. Any, I, don't have, I don't know anything about Classic Who. It's so funny because I'm like not really like I'm not a figure collector or anything, um, and there's nothing in New Who that I I really want. But there's just like little like really nostalgic things from Classic Who that I feel like when I was a kid, 
I, and like it was like season two of, of new who was out and i'd be in like a doctor who like museum in blackpool and that was there was like a shop um and they have all these toys of like the the earth shock cyberman and stuff like that and, and like genesis the daleks daleks and, and all these like designs that felt they, they didn't feel dated at the time mm. but like i looked at them and i was like wow this is like such a cool like mm. like this is what classic who is and i th- there's little things like i, I really want to get a, a 60s dalek i really want to get an Earthshock cyberman and i really want to get uh, yeah a little bessie like th- there's just like little things little, from little classic bits, who yeah, that I, I just want to get to put on my shelf with these collection sets and i don't know but i, I also i don't know if i want the toys that have like the arms that move like i'm like i'm fine with just like a little statue figure like, a, I don't know. like an actual like set in place yeah but i'm honestly like fine with whatever yeah i don't know they're just it's a weird thing that i just kind of want them and there's nothing in you who that reflects that for me yeah no i get that i get that no um but to answer your question no i'm not i'm not going off classic who i'm i'm very um glad that i decided to start watching it this year with the show i don't think i'd ever have done it without the show mm-hmm. or like your push so yeah i, I guess as well just briefly, I guess, a message to the audience. Like, mm-hmm. especially with the 60th coming up next year, maybe not a lot of Doctor Who content coming out. Uh, I I suggest really just dive into it. Like, yeah. there, uh, I will say this again, you have to be like, uh, you have to love the show. Like, you have to love the lore. Yeah. And you have to deal with it being cheesy. And But I, I love, uh, there's something about, I love seeing the effects being how they were at the time yeah i love that I, I that's what makes it so good the, the little maggot like moving across the floor and it's not like it, it's, it's like, like done i think it was like cso at the time or whatever but basically like today it would be like a green screen yeah like they like they do it on like a green screen and they've just put it on yeah. like a still shot of the floor literally like, and it like moves and it's kind of cute it's, it's like, not look cute you sent me a snapchat of that and i was like that is not cute. cute it's like moving like this it's going off to joe like, grant yeah. i'm like oh yeah by the way uh joe grant amazing like fantastic company. she pops up all the time like she was just in uh power the daughter yeah which is really cool mm-hmm. um she's in sarah jane uh, but know, we need more story we oh. need more look i think with the time that we're in now i don't think that's uh impossible I no i don't think so either get some stuff i feel like i'm talking too much do you want to no not at all stuff about the episode no, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a lot to say. I, I just really enjoy it. I I have this weird thing every time I watch either a John Pertwee or a Sylvester McCoy story where I'm like, I watch a John Pertwee and I'm like, this is my favorite classic Doctor. And then I watch a Sylvester McCoy story and I'm like, no, Sylvester, he's got the humor. He's got the, like, he's just silly. He's my favorite. And then I'll go back and watch a Pertwee one and he's suave. He's James Bond. And I'm like, no. This is my favorite classic doctor. Like, I literally cannot decide between these two guys. And it's funny because we're, we're doing Battlefield in two weeks, which is a Sylvester McCoy story. And and so it'll be the ultimate test, I guess, watching those two episodes, these two stories kind of back to back in a way. Yeah, man. John is um, definitely just like, he's got swag, man. Like, he is just cool. <laughs> what? The man does have swag. He's got swag, man. Like, he is just, he's awesome, man. He's a swaggy guy. And again, like... Um, I don't know why I have such nostalgia with this, but like the fact that it's like my dad's doctor, I've said this a few times, like I just have a good connection with it, I mm. guess. Like, cause like me and my dad, we don't really connect on like much, but we occasionally connect with like music and movies or TV shows. And yeah, cool. if I can take that one thing, I'll take it, you know? That's really sweet. Yeah. The, uh, by the way, like, um, yeah, the Brig's awesome. I just love oh. seeing the Brig. Like, the Brig is just so He's great. Amazing. Like, you know, like, if what a... Was this, like... I'm sure you can ask this. This was, like... Was this risky at the time to do the Dodger just staying at unit and just, like, having, like... It's I think... It's a sitcom, like, the reoccurring characters of the week. Like, the Brig. It probably like, was risky. I, I do think there was a practical reason, I think, I read. Like, it might have been a right. budget thing um, or, like, some controller put their foot down on it or something. I think there was a practical reason why it happened. I, I can't, can't remember now. Um... But yeah, there, there was a reason behind it. But yeah, I think it was, it just creates this this really unique three season era from, from I think it's season seven, eight, nine, three Doctors, which is the start of the season, season 10, which is when the Doctor can then leave Earth again. And and so I think yeah, from Joe memory, that. this season they go off Earth a little bit, but then the finale, they obviously come back to right to unit and, and it's just this unique time in, in the Pertwee era where it's like unit is in almost every story yeah. and then... Uh, they're in the first story of Tom's era, 
And then they're in one more story in, I think it's like the first story of, of his second season. And then that's the last time you see Unit for a period of time. Right. Long, and the Brig rocks up as well there as well. Yeah. It brings in, in those episodes as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I watched like the first, I wouldn't say the f- whole first part. I kind of skipped for a little bit, but I was curious to see um, who took over from Joe Grant. And it was, of course, Sarah Jane Smith. Liv Slater, man. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that was like, it wasn't said at unit, but. The brig was in it, and uh, yeah, no, it's just like um, I'm also curious, like you know, once like even Adric died, like I always I checked out Time Flight to see if they spoke about it, and I was wondering if they even like acknowledged it, if like yeah, but they kind of like that's what um in the Death of the Doctor, I think if I, I think that's what's called in the, the Sir Jane episode, yes, Death of the Doctor. Uh, Matt mentions like all the stuff that Joe was doing, and I guess it's like with her husband mm-hmm. is that kind of what they're going for is that she continued on to be like a traveler and like went yeah she and... had a life with her husband let's let's do it let's dive into that and talk about that because that yeah their chemistry is obviously like the backbone of the story and but then seeing the doctor kind of as a dad or like almost as a dad character to joe uh it, it, the whole episode kind of felt like he was walking her down the aisle you mm-hmm. know like 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 he was like this is his last send off with her um, and he's handing her over to someone else to look after her now. How long had she been a companion for? Three seasons. Okay, that's quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, eight, nine, ten. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and so it's really... And, and they, they have a good chemistry throughout. I've not seen all of it, but I've seen season eight and season ten. And and yeah, and, and that last scene at, at the party... Oh, is, it's great, man. It's so lovely. It so lovely. I love that they don't say goodbye. Like And yeah, uh, what, what did you think watching it? Yeah, I, I think um, if I have like a if I have like a bit of a criticism, like I felt like it was like kind of like they they suddenly just had this like they kind of like meet like Joe Grant and the um, what's his name the scientist um, Clifford Jones. Yeah, Cliff. They kind of like meet and then like they kind of like it almost seems like Cliff is like like Joe's getting on his nerves. And then they make this like partnership mm. quite quickly, and then they're like, then Joe's very quickly like, I'm gonna leave, and then like we're gonna get married. I I guess like, but I don't know, I don't know Joe Grant's character that well. I mm. just hopped into it. That was my take, and was it was a bit quick, but I'm sure there's a reason as to her wanting to do that and wanting to move on uh, that's my quick little take on it but the scene no. where they meet is very funny when joe's that's, just yeah, like yeah. she's knocking everything over yeah. and walking into everything in the lab trip it onto the fungi yeah <laughs> nah, that's good like I, I i definitely like have like an outsider's perspective about these episodes and i i want to make that clear i'm mm-hmm. not trying to be a twat about it twat. uh but yeah no definitely uh Definitely love that ending scene. I feel like I could relate to that. Like I've had a few times in my life where like I'd much rather just leave and say goodbye or like maybe like a friendship or a relationship has kind of like run its course. Mm. And um, yeah, it also reminded me a lot of the exact same thing happens in Here's Last Vow with Sherlock leaving without saying goodbye to John Watson. It very uh, much reminded yes, me of that. True. Which I think maybe Stephen was, uh, I know Stephen's a big classic fan. Mm-hmm. It seemed very similar to what they did there so and i love that ending as well so it's like yeah you're right it's like don't say goodbye just just leave and there's a there's a beautiful shot where like the door closes and you and you know that joe knows that he's left and he just, yeah she sees him leave yeah yeah and he hops in bessie and drives away and and the fact that it was the end of the season as well like i'm sure fans were left being like oh yeah it's you know, great like happens next, it you know? like cross cuts him driving with betty to yeah to like joe in the party and stuff and and it's great seeing like Benton and Yates and the Brig just like having a good time at the party. Look, like Nicholas Corey loves a loves a whiskey. All he right? does and a bit of champagne. You know? I was like reading somewhere that Nic- Nicholas Corny- Courtney was like, yeah, no, like the moment we wrap, it's just down to the pub with Pertwee. Like they they just like would just spend every night at the pub after shooting and stuff like that. Fantastic, man. I love. They even say that in um, Winter of Sons, like he always made us poorer. A scotch. Yeah. In case yeah. the doc rocked up. Yeah, I love that. Nah, I... Oh, Christ. Connor has spat that's alcohol... That's been sat on the desk. Everywhere. That's been sat on the desk. Jeez. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's been sat on the desk. Like, what is going on here? That's crazy. I was, that was a fizzy boy. 
Still tastes great. Tastes great. Just soda water and um, vodka. Mm. No, I loved it. I, I, Jesus, this is like... You got a wet patch. Kind of peed himself. Seems it. That's how much he enjoyed the green death. Yeah, look, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, loved the era. I liked how the uh, maggots became these like big fly boys. They're just like flying around. <laughs> that is funny when they're like driving the car. Get and down. Get down. It's like CSCO. And the Briggs like, what's he doing? Flying and they're like, get down. <laughs> Dark. It's like, <laughs> oh man, like, I love I love that shit. And by the way, yeah, I did also think the little fly boy was cute as well. Oh my god, just like the maggot. You're in, you like weird shit. Like you think that's cute. I just love animals, man. It was like it was like going across the floor. It looked, it just looked cute. All right, what can I say? Do you love animals? But what did you do when we just saw a spider before? I said, don't kill it. There was. I, I didn't kill it. It was already dead. I thought it was plain dead. Do you know spiders do that? Yeah, Basically, but- I bought out, I, I pulled out my mic. No, I pulled out my uh, four pack and I felt something kind of squishy in my hand. I was like, what is that? It felt like a ball of like a little, little ball of yarn mm. and I dropped it and it was a, a spider. Yeah. And I have a, I have arachnophobia through the roof. Like Aiden was seeing me going, ah, like yeah. get rid of it. And then you're like, is it dead? I'm like, I think so. Like I held it. I know the even thing about it now makes me like, I know spies play dead. Anyway, Aiden got the Hoover. Hoovered it up. It was fine. Like, I gave it, like, a, a shove and stuff. And it wasn't moving before I hoovered it up, so I... I'm big into letting them escape. Like, I'm, I, I don't like... Because I just want to scare them. I don't like it to be... I don't like killing things that need to, don't need to be killed, but I think it was dead. They're good for houses. They get rid of, like, flies and insects and, you know. Correct. Well, uh, maybe next time we'll, uh, you shouldn't run away from a spider. Make I it can't your help friend. man. I just got a fat ranophobia. You just wait till we get to Arachnids of the UK, baby. Here's how bad the episode was. That did not make me scared of spiders. Did it make you scared of Stormzy? I love Stormzy. I was meant to see him um, uh, yesterday on the 23rd, which is funny. Got mm. two day. He was meant to... He rescheduled three times. He'd be like, hey, my Doctor Who fans, I'm going to play this shout song out, from Arachnids of the UK. Shout out to Doctor Who today, 59. <laughs> no, and he, uh, he cancelled. <laughs> His tour. So, oh, what a big his sad. His new album's coming out tomorrow. Love Storm Z. Love Big Mike. I had a dream about him last night. Like I was at a concert, but it didn't happen. Because you weren't there. You dreamed that you were there. Yeah, it was... Yeah, sad if you think about it. <laughs> I dreamt I was there. So we're going to give our scores later in the show as, yep. as to what we think of the Green Death. Connor, I believe you have something new and fresh and exciting for us. Yeah, we do, man. This is what we watched this week. Oh, should I have the sting ready? Oh, you got a sting? Can you... Well, hold on. Uh... Uh, this uh, is what we watched this week. Eagle, eagle eared viewers will recognize this from an episode of this podcast a few years ago. So yeah, I remember that. This thing, at, at one point in the show, we did a segment for one episode, um, and it was called Movie Reviews with the Boys. Oh, and we was talked it? about Knives Out and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, because I finally re watched, watched it, it after. Did you see it last time? Uh, no, it only came out like yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, I'm seeing it on Sunday. I got tickets booked. I was going to say, I thought you would be the first in line to go I see would, Ryan but... Johnson's new Who Done It flick. Limited showings and. Um, I wanted to try and get some of my friends to go see it because I know that they'd wait for it to go on the Netflix, which is fine. That's still supporting it. Um, but I was like, I want to try and you know get some people into the cinema to watch this movie. And, and Ask so if I'm going to go watch it. You're not going to watch it. Hell no. Twat. Twat. Am I going to watch it on Netflix? Hell no. Well, good for you. Enjoy missing two hours of great Hell Ryan no. Johnson content. How do you know it's great? You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I've heard many good reviews. Yeah, me too. Sorry. Um, I, I have and this I, and jokey I, beef with Ryan. I adore the first movie. I rewatched the first movie last week and I just think it's a great film. Um, I think Ryan Johnson's an excellent director, actually. Anyways, uh, what is this new segment, Connor? Well, I said to you today, Aiden, like, you know, we watch a lot of stuff in the week and... I guess we like to talk about it. Mm. That could be good or bad, depending on who is watching. That's true. But I watched a few things. I know you did. Do you want to take it away? What you watched? Sure. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. I guess I guess we just do like a brief mini review of, of other much, things that yeah. we watched in the week. I guess uh, like 
with like, I don't know how many things you've got to bring up. I have like three things. So I guess like if we only had like one each or if we only have one between us, like obviously it would you could talk about it for longer. Yeah. But if we, uh, how many things you got to talk about? I'm just going to talk about one. Okay, cool. All right, sweet. Yeah. Um, uh, take so, your time. So, well, no, it's, it's fine. You can take your time. What I watched this week. Uh, yeah, I watched a few things, but the main thing that I want to talk about is Andor has come to its conclusion this week after 12 episodes, which is the, the Star Wars spin-off featuring uh, Andor, the Cassian titular Andor. character. And it has been a show that has been interesting because it has come out quite quietly, I feel. Like, not a lot of people are talking about it, but the people that are tend to be really loving it. Mm-hmm. And it's actually one of those things where the people that, kind of like me, that haven't liked what Star Wars has done the last three or four years have really liked Andor. Yeah, okay. And and the people that have been like, Kenobi, uh, have, uh, Jesus, have who not... liked that? <laughs> I hated Kenobi. Yeah, uh, but the people, too, the, unfortunately. The people that like Kenobi seem to sort of hate Andor. And I think it's because Andor, it's, it's a slow burn show. This episode, particularly, particularly last week, episode 11, uh, where... It's one of those ones where nothing happens, in quotation marks, where it's just people in rooms talking, setting the scene for, for the finale in episode 12. Um, and, and I'm not going to spoil anything because I, I really would love people to, to watch this show. I know you watched the first episode and weren't a big fan of it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think it's like really well directed all the way through. I think it's so interesting and new. It's the, the, the director of... It was either the director or the writer. I can't quite remember. Um, I think it's the writer, the main writer in showrunner i think he literally in an interview was like i don't like star wars and and like that shows like this isn't a show that's going to give you shitty cameos and and this kind of thing the only familiar character from memory is uh, two characters andor and mon mothma and the two characters that definitely um doesn't uh uh forest whitaker rock up forest whitaker is in it is in like two scenes okay um but but they're, they're also kind of there for a reason they're not just like it's forest whitaker it's because Forrest Whitaker, we've all known his his character, Saul Guerrero, is there. Saul Guerrero, that's it, yeah. He's been a big part of the rebellion. He's in Clone Wars and everything. So he, he kind of does need to be there to, to for it to make sense. And um, yeah, I, I think it's exciting. I think the score is the best score. I do think Mando, even though like I have mixed feelings about Mandalorian, I, I love it and I also dislike parts of it. I think the score is incredible and was a great like sort of new sound for Star Wars. And once again, I think Andor has created a new sound. I think visually it's the best directed TV show of all the Star Wars shows. Um, it, it looks fantastic. Um, there's episodes that make you sweaty. Like, so tense. And what they kind of do is... The the first two episodes build to episode three, which is, like, sweaty. Like, so sweaty. Like, you're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And then four and five build to six. And six is like, fuck, fuck. Like, it is so intense. And then seven, eight, and nine build to ten, which is also very sweaty and so badass. And then... 11 kind of puts everything in place from the first 10 episodes that then leads into 12 with the finale. Um, I think it's a really well-crafted show. I know you probably don't have a lot to to say on it because you've only seen one episode, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I get to it. I think, like... I feel like it's the kind of show I would like. I think you would. I was really surprised when you said you weren't into it from, from the first episode. Maybe I didn't... Um, maybe I didn't... I don't know. I don't I, know. Maybe, maybe I need to watch episode two. I, well, I think you should at least give it a try to episode three. Okay. But the ultimate thing, I think, is do it to six. Because six is so good, man. Like, okay. if you don't like it by six, you're probably not going to like the show. Okay. But but at least do the first three. Because the first three is one arc. The next three is another arc. They're, they're kind of like mini arcs throughout the season. and they're I've kept up really with it. Good. Like, I, um, you know, I, I watch um, Grace Randolph's... Um, movie math every week and and she breaks down like all the um on nielsen like who's watching what and uh mm-hmm. yeah she talks about andor a lot and like I, I i try and keep updated with everything even if i'm not watching it like i try yeah. and that's like what i love it's what i care about so i have been hearing about it and like what you said unfortunately i don't think a lot of people are watching it but um season two is definitely happening yes so yeah yeah no it, it sounds like it might just be like um Almost like the, uh, you know, like the the odd dog of Star Wars. The black sheep. The the black sheep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm keen to watch it maybe at some point. It's so interesting because all the characters are so developed. Like every character. Mm. The villains are the best villains in Star Wars because uh, like Dedra is one of the main villains. And at the start of the show, the first few episodes, I was kind of like, she has got to be a good guy because she's being developed so well. Like you just you just feel like she's going to be a good guy because you understand why she does what she does and you feel for her. 
But then, like, halfway through the show, you're like, oh, no, she's just a really well-crafted bad guy. Mm. And, and yeah, I, I just... I'm blown away by the level of storytelling, and it's probably the best Disney's ever done with Star Wars. Is K2SO in it? Not yet, but there's one of the droids that he... Yeah, like, I noticed that, So, but I know he is, like, a copy of the Imperial droid, yeah. so it... it yeah. yeah, okay. So, um, so he, he, yeah, they, they a got season two arc. Maybe, yeah. It, it, it's great though as well because there's like this political thriller side to it with Mom Mothma on Coruscant, um, and she's probably my favorite character in the show. I, I think what she goes through and throughout the show, the sacrifices that she learns that she has to make, like she has to be incredibly selfless and sacrifice very personal things to her yeah. in order to make the rebellion like financially like you know what i mean like right. you don't just get ships by getting ships that that thing costs you you a, a rebellion has to be funded and mom Mothma is at the heart and of that built on hope and they are built on hope <laughs> and she has to sacrifice a lot to yeah. get there and I, I think that's quite a powerful thing and the production design is amazing anyways uh that's andor i really yeah. recommend you watch it I on noticed, disney plus i noticed um two actors that i actually really like her in it and they're like yeah it's cool. It's good to see. There's loads of Dog Who actors, including everyone's favorite. Was it Shauna from from uh, Last Christmas? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. She was in um, she was in Fresh Meat, a right? TV show I watched. Yeah, she's in like seven or eight episodes of it. Like she, yeah, she's like a main that's character. That's one of the people I was talking about. Yeah, so she was in a show I watched called Fresh Meat, which is like a college. Uh, it's like a college. Um, how you know when there's like houses in college, a like frat a, house. Yeah, like a frat house. Yeah, like, yeah. Anyway, like what every cool Marvel character talks like. Someone hey said, guys. someone said that to me, and now I can't unsee it. That all the Marvel characters, like their sense of humor, is just like frat boy. Like yes. I'm a muscly macho man. I know like, the uh, Guardians holiday special comes out tomorrow, and I'm keen for that because I like James Gunn. But yeah, I've kind of given up on Marvel, and it's got a Wombat song in it. So it does. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Hit me with what you have watched this week, Connor. I'm gonna go through them. I'm gonna fly through them. First mm-hmm. of all, um, I watched. I know. I I know. I uh, mentioned last week that I was gonna watch Jennifer Kent's episode of uh, Cabinet of Curiosities, yes. starring Andrew Lincoln. I watched it. A show that my missus is keen to watch, by the way. So that that's Definitely. fantastic. She, she loves uh, American Horror Story. Hey, uh, I think she might have a long time ago, but I don't. Yeah, think I know she watched it at school, so mm-hmm. it's very similar to that. Cool. Uh, yeah. No, I Jennifer Kent is amazing. The way she handles framing is like stunning right like, it is such a stunning episode it's definitely the best out of all of the uh episodes there's eight uh i can see why i left it to last hmm. um the ending i think is very it, the ending is how you take it i think the ending is quite open but okay, it's like yeah. how you take it i think but um man it's stunning and like to see annie lincoln it was amazing mm-hmm. uh coincidentally speak- the walking dead ending. speaking of annie lincoln oh we're going walking there dead, final ed <laughs> I thought it was dog shit. I think it's terrible. They have all these spin-offs coming out and that's why it didn't feel like an ending. Uh, well, yeah, not much to say about it other than I just thought it was shit. I don't know. It's probably one of the worst final seasons of a TV show I have ever seen. It aired over a year in three parts, which is unheard of. Stupid. AMC have got like detachment issues. Really. <laughs> uh, was such dog shit. I know I, you watched the last five minutes? Well, yeah. I, Ten minutes? I haven't watched anything from... I think eight episodes into season seven, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, oh, I man. just like, yeah, was like yeah, I just you made cannot. the right choice. And then um, I've loosely kept up with what's just like Googling it. Like I know about the Commonwealth kind of, I don't really know anything from this last season. I think the last thing that I knew was that the Commonwealth rocked up. Um, and did. so I was like, I was going to watch the last episode. And then I was, just, I just could not bring myself to it. I was like, I'm not going to know what's going on. And then I watched the last five minutes of it. And I was like, this is, it didn't make sense to me. And like, I get that because I've not I seen this. it. And oh. then I messaged Connor and I, I like, I won't spoil anything, yeah. but I, I like asked him about the ending to try and make some sense out of it. And I was like, brother, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. Like, I do not know. Yeah, man. Connor watched the entire last season and did not I know. I did. I watched the entire last season really thinking it was going to be something. And I swear without spoiling it, if you haven't really seen it, like, there are no like major character deaths so there's like nothing there's nothing mm. i was like in the final season you should be killing off characters every couple of episodes Which like is i, I think uh, was always kind of the appeal of the walking dead a bit literally oh my god like it just anyway and um it's an interesting point that you say that 
Yeah. What ruins it as a final season is that it's just setting up spin-offs. Oh, that's the worst part. Because yeah. what's so funny to me is Dan, like your Dan, yeah. when we were we were so into like Walking Dead during like season five and six, we'd come home from school Dude, and we watch were, it. It was all we could fucking talk about. The walk home from school to, to Dan's house to yeah. watch it, we'd just be speculating what's gonna happen in the yeah, new episode. The, the best. I remember like Everyone was like, what's going to happen in the season five, mid-season finale? Everyone was like, Emily Kinney's going to die. And I was like, no, she won't. She just got ma- made main cast. They won't just kill her off. And then they killed her off. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's funny is I remember having a conversation with Dan. And I was like, uh, I, I don't know how we got onto it. But we we're talking about setting up, sp- setting, setting up spinoffs in main shows. And Dan literally said to me, it's like if Walking Dead ended and the final scene was setting up a spinoff. <laughs> and he was like, that would be so shit. And like, that's, that's exactly literally what, what he said. Yeah. It's sad, man. Like, you know, they set up the um, the Rick and Michonne spinoff. They set up the uh, Negan and Maggie spinoff. Right. Which, by the way, uh, sadly enough, I know that um, it was meant to be Daryl and Carol. But I know uh, Melissa McBride, who plays Carol, mm. uh, when they announced they're going to be filming in Paris, she's like, look, I've already spent years away from my family. I think similar to Andy Lincoln, I think they moved to Atlanta like yeah. 10 months out of the year. They're like, look, I think she thought they were going to be filming in Atlanta. And uh, yeah, she was like, look, I can't do it. So I think they shot a scene where they left together. But in the episode, I could tell it was a fat green screen in the background. And they right. said goodbye to each other. And then Daryl left. And like it was the classic fat green screen. And like also, it was like a, there was a shot of like Norman Reedus. And it was so focused on him that the background was so blurred that you probably couldn't tell that unless you knew that, you know, originally it was meant to be Norman Reedus and Melissa McBride, but, like, I think it was a reshoot, so... Right. Anyway, I thought it was dog shit. That's interesting. Well, good review. Good review from Connor there. I also rewatched a movie that Aiden hates that I love, Logan Lucky, directed by Steven I, Soderbergh. Oh, my God! Hold on! <laughs> Connor Aiden messes me! It. Kind of messing me about, and he goes, "Have you seen Logan Lucky?" And I said, "Yeah, I thought it was good." Smiley face, and then you you said like, "Yeah, I think it's like really good." And I was like, "No, I said I thought you'd like it." Yes, that's what you said. And then I said, "Look, I I thought it was good, but like I wasn't blown away by anything in it." Which I I stand by because I I went into it like kind of excited because I heard decent reviews, and I and I watched it and was like, "Ah, um, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun." What more yeah. can you want from a movie more than fun? I rewatched it. I don't know why. I just shut it on. That's a weird movie to rewatch. You know, I'm a weird person, man. I, I watched six episodes of Classic Who in a row. It's it's not a movie that like I don't think necessarily has like stood the test of time that people always talk about. You know, I kind of like I kind of like disagree. Like I, I I just I have a warmth for that movie, and I just think I don't really have a lot to say about it other than I just think it's really fun, and I really just enjoyed rewatching it. I think Adam Driver and and. Uh, Come on, man. You love Daniel Craig, man. He's in it. He's fantastic. Uh, Chan Tatum's great in it. I just think it's a really fun heist movie. I yeah. just really like it. And the final thing I have to say, I started watching this new HBO show. Mm-hmm. Okay, so last week when I left here, I don't even think we spoke about Marriage Story, but I know you love it. This is my second favorite, sometimes favorite movie of all time. What's the first? Uh, it, it's always a battle between Marriage Story and Whiplash. Okay. I don't know why. I went home and I was like, I'm going to rewatch the uh trailer for marriage story i rewatch trailers all the time because i okay. love movies um and i saw damn this... i must hate movies i don't do that uh, well, everyone's got their different techniques <laughs> <laughs> didn't go to film school can't oh I say. my god Please uh, geez, stop fucking saying that sorry shit. Uh, but, no I, I i i went down on the feed on youtube and there was this uh hbo trailer for a show called uh scenes for marriage and I was like, what is this? Scene, scenes from a marriage? Scenes from a marriage. From from a marriage? Scenes from a marriage. Okay, yep. And, Never uh, heard of it. It stars Oscar Isaac and right. uh, Jessica Chastain. It's an HBO show, five episodes. And um, I watched the trailer. I was like, man, this uh, this looks fucking dope. And I chucked it on on Monday. And uh, it was all shot through COVID. Wow. And basically, it is pretty much like 9% of the show is all set in the house. And it is just too characters talking wow okay cool um, sounds like my cup of tea i think you'll love it man and I, this isn't a spoiler this is in the trailer it's a it's a marriage that is kind of like run its course that's all i'll say okay and i'm I'll hooked tell you what man like it is just characters fucking talking like there are just give me that there's like mm. an episode entirely set in the house like it is just it's just like 
anyway, the the acting is amazing. I don't normally like Jessica Chastain, but she's amazing in it. Okay. Oscar Isaac, I love. He is so great in it. It is just it is just two characters just hashing it out. It relies on the script completely. And it does an absolutely amazing job at it. I I have like two episodes left. And, I'm um, very interested. Oh, I, I'm genuinely like I'm not just saying I, this. I'm very I interested. Think, I think all I could think this is why I think of you. You know, I was you like, just think I, I like divorce. Uh, <laughs> well, I know you love Marriage Story. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was just like, you'll love this, man. I yeah, think right. you'll really love it. It like it really just it depends on character. Mm. And when every episode ends, like time has passed for each episode. Like, okay. It's like time has passed. Things have happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, stuff has been said. And uh, I tell you what, man, like, I think the I haven't finished it, but I just think the I think it's fucking great. And it, it seems to have flown under the radar. I haven't heard anyone talk no, about I'm it. No, I've not heard of it. But no. when I look on my like, IMDb and when I hear people talk about it, uh, everyone seems to love it. And it's got my highest recommendation. It just, I seriously, I think you'll love it. Cool. And I think you guys Note taken. love it too, so give it a watch. And that's everything we watched this week. Yeah, we got to get a new, a better title for that. We should have done this segment last week because I had so much more to talk about last week. This week I haven't um, had much, uh, what had uh, had a lot of time yeah, to yeah, watch well, stuff. Well, 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 um, I've been watching Crown, but we'll have get to that. Have you watched season yet? No, I've been re-watching the first four seasons, so okay. that's why I'm not going to talk about it because I'll okay. just talk about season five once I've, I've watched that. Um, but I'm almost there. Um, okay, so... Uh, now we're just going to give our final scores for Green Death out of 10 and then we're going to wrap up the show Connor what did you think of the Green Death out of 10 uh, really enjoyed it love John Pertwee's era John Pertwee's era <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah obviously like I think the big bad was like it went nowhere I will say that I think Joe Grant's character kind of just left on a bit of a whim no I know okay I don't know. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, I don't know. I, get you. I don't know. Okay, people are gonna hate me for saying no, that. No, no, no. You're allowed to say, say what you want to say, mate. People are gonna hate me for saying that. Yeah, he says that after going. No, no, I just disagree. <laughs> but that's fine. No, I look. That's I not what I expect you to say because I, I have always thought it was a really beautiful send off. I think it's a really good send off. I just think it happened a bit too quick. But sure, that's fine. Okay. I said my piece. Seven point five out of ten. Mate, give me one of these fist bumps. It's no a seven point five from me. Um, there we, there we go. Bang. Yep, that's the tradition. Bang. Cool. Um, yeah, seven point five for me. I pretty much feel the same about a lot of things you said there. It's, it's a stand-up story. I think it's. Uh, so you you agree though, like like because I don't really know Joe Grant's companion that much as a companion. Like, do you think that actually did fit her? Just kind of like instantly jumping yeah, into it. That works for me. Okay, cool. That works for well, me. I, I trust your opinion over mine because you've seen it. I've all seen play out. I've seen more. I've not seen all of it, but I've seen. But you've seen more it play it. out more. So okay. Yeah, I, I um yeah, I liked it and yeah, for me it only kinda loses marks because episodes five and six are just a bit uh lackluster, I think. Yeah. But yeah, two seven point five boys out of ten. They always kinda like stay there welcome a bit too long, classic episodes. They do. Yeah. It's I like all four parters should be a two parter and all six parters should be a four parter. Yeah, I don't know if that was like a thing with BBC like you need to do this many episodes. It's or... just like they commission like twenty four episodes, you it, know. Exactly. God so... forbid, I don't know what it's gonna be like when I get season two in, in December on Blu ray, because that's like forty episode seasons. I got asked that yesterday and um yeah, I guess that's when we'll review a William Harnell because William Harnell's the only doctor I haven't really yeah, Diary, same for me. We're considering he is the first. Yeah, yeah. 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 Boy, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. I, I've seen, I, I think you've seen this as well. I've seen the first episode. You've never seen the first? Okay, okay, cool. We got to do that at some point. Oh my God. Okay, hey, you've called me out on my. You've never seen an unearth- unearthly my, child. My biggest shame. No, that's fine. I've never oh seen an unearthly child. Fake fan. I'm sorry. Fake God, fan. Everyone is going to hate me for that, but I have not seen it. I apologize. Next week. Sorry spectacular episode we can say it now we can say it take it away next week we're doing a very special episode of the pod we're going to be joined by a very special guest that guest is going to be we've had half of who's there doctor who podcast on before this is the other half it's troy slash red archer live is going to be joining us on the podcast and we're going to do a very special thing kind of trialing it i think it will be a fun episode that we can do with like it'll be good to do it with crispy and josh other members of the Who community, as well as maybe even some some people outside of that, like people that have maybe worked on Who that have an extensive backstory of Who down the line, well, far Jamie down the line. Stone. We're not we're not saying Jamie. Look, Stone. I'm not saying that Peter Capaldi is no. going to be on in, in two weeks' time, but 
Well, we have he stuff planned in the back, though. It's like, all coming up. Don't you worry. Maybe Pete's in there. Maybe he's not. You have to subscribe and find <laughs> um, out. But, but what we're going to do with Troy on the show, which thank you, Troy. It's going to be great to have you on. Um, what we're going to do is a special podcast called Who to be Buried With, which kind of sounds like a sex joke like or, or like a relationship, like a, or like a romance like a romance show. Oh, right. Like, like who, who am I going to be buried with? Yeah, like, okay. Who, who will I end up with? Who's yeah. going to be my... But uh, what it is, it's a spin on my boy, Brett Goldstein. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone loves Brett Goldstein. He's the nicest guy in the UK. Wow. Um, he's got a bo- podcast called Films to be Buried With where people die and he asks them about their lives in movies. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to literally really play into that. I recommend you watching it because Brett has episodes out with Russell T. Davis, with Mandip Gill, um, with, Gil. with Pearl Mackey. Fantastic oh, people from Doctor Who, as well as so many other shows that you would have seen. Zach Braff was on recently. Zach so Braff. many, so many people. Edgar Wright has a two-parter on there. Like it's fantastic. They talk about people's lives through movies. We're gonna do that with Troy, but we're gonna talk about Troy's life through Doctor Who. So stay tuned for that next week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna talk about death, the meaning of life, what happens after death. It's gonna be a fun time. We're gonna talk about that. Briefly, yeah. It'll okay, be we'll, cool. we'll, It's all part. We've run out of ideas. We're copying other people's podcasts now. We, so. I've always thought it would be fun. The nah, moment nah, I started I listening to that, yeah. I was like, we should do this, but with Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, we have such fun stuff coming up. We do. It's going to be a good end of the year. Seriously. And even like, we're talking like early next year. I mean, early, early, early. Mm. Some fucking sick stuff coming up. It's going to be great. Which I can't say, but it's awesome. It's a coming... It's a coming. Was that was that Jar Jar Binks? It's a coming. 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 Jeez, all right. Quite God. After you didn't get cancelled for your water impression last week, maybe now you get cancelled for your Jar Jar Binks impression. I think the water impression was worse than the Jar Jar. Only, only money. I'm doing it quieter because my audio was so shit when I was doing it last week. Movies to be buried by. Only money. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Next week, Troy on the show. Twitter, Instagram, at 50 Doctor. Subscribe to the 50% Doctor Who Podcast YouTube channel. Get us there to episode 100 very... Uh, sorry, to, to 500 subscribers very soon. So, Connor, what are you... Maybe maybe one point. Like one point? Maybe next year, we could do a uh, Who to be buried with Aiden Green or Who to be buried with yeah. Connor Hannum. Turn we the tables do and do it with us, yeah. Who, yeah, you know. The yeah. guests have too much fun. Let's have some fun. Let's let's, let's we never it. have fun. Yeah. When do we when do Oh, oh the camera battery just died. <laughs> oh, no. I knew it. I've been trying to wrap up the show pretty quick because I was watching oh, it run out. God. That's fine. Um Goodbye. Thank you so yeah. much for listening and watching. Listen to the, the outro in darkness. Yes, if you're it's watching on YouTube, Aiden enjoy black and, and Connor's, Connor's darkness. 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 We're doing sad darkness and Doctor sad Who times is in of the Doctor darkness. Who. Is in the dark uh, darkness. Do 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 do. Um, I've known that that battery was running out for a while, so I was wrapping that up very quickly. Also, desperate need of a wee. Great. <laughs>